Anytime I had a meeting with the bishop or their cohort, the henchman, it was the same thing. Don't tell anyone. It's a part of the secret. That's the leverage. I worked the second theater of the Northern Ireland Troubles shootings and bombings and hostages and so forth. That was nothing compared to the terroristic activities employed by the Vatican executed through local bishops. Because that's what it is, it's terrorism. Father Gallagher is going to be on the show. Father Gallagher, back in 2016, he did the right thing. He did the thing that we were all trained in the Catholic Church to do. If you've been through protecting God's children, the virtues training, if you see something, if you know something, you're supposed to say something. That's what we're all told to do repeatedly over and over again. Well, that's what he did. And then he got shown the door. Why is that? What's going on there? Seems to be an injustice. By the way, my name is Joe McLean. I host a radio program called A Catholic Take, where we look at the world through a Catholic lens. I'd love for you to hang out with us. If you like it, give it a thumbs up and let us know what you think in the comments below. Back in 2016, Father John Gallagher, he did the right thing. He did what he was trained to do. He did what he was told to do. We, we were all told. I went through the protecting God's children just recently, again, for yet another time. And they tell you, what you're if you see something, you say something, right? That's what he did. Well, what happened? Well, there was a priest visiting from another country. And it got reported to Father John through a teenager that that priest showed that teenager some very, let's say, disgusting, perverted pictures. Many of them, actually. Seemed like he was grooming him. So he, he uh, when it was brought to his attention, he got a parishioner who was a retired police officer to go with him to interview this priest about the accusations. Turns out the priest admitted it. So what did you, Father John do? He did what was right. He calls the police. He calls the police, turns over what he has for evidence, and it shocks the police. Father John Gallagher, thank you for being on with us today. I, I want to get into your story because it's it's kind of a it's a heart wrenching story in many ways about uh, you know calling good evil and evil good. You do what's right, and then you get the short end of the stick. So I set the audience up a little bit, gave them a, a tiny bit of the background about the the incident itself. A visiting foreign priest seems to be grooming a teenager in your parish. It's brought to your attention, and you do the right thing. Take us take us from there. They feasted the Epiphany uh, the first Sunday in, in January, January 5th. And it, I was told an altercation or something had happened. And when I met the priest, I asked him, I said, what happened? And he said there was a, a thing, sort of the way he phrased it. So I just knew by his demeanor, it was serious. And so I got my office manager and her husband, who was a retired detective, Come with me and we notified the police. And I sat the guy down and basically said, what happened? He proceeded to tell me. And I mean, this, he just opened his mouth and it all came out. And I wasn't expecting the detail and the gravity of his history. And then he just said, can I get a confession? And I'll get my plane ticket and I will leave. And that was probably more shocking than his actions. I said, you're not going to confession. You're going to jail. This is a crime. I said, have you done this before? He said, oh, yes, many times. Wow. I said, excuse me? He says, many times. My superior says, go to confession. Makes me sign off that I will be good. And I get a new assignment. Here I am. I, I, I just couldn't believe my ears at this point. And yeah. so I said, you know, tell me a little more about this. I don't know if it was going to sort of fit the shock effect or just do the bad behavior because my face was just, I don't know what it was like. I was just, I was terrified. I didn't know what was coming next. So I asked him a simple question. I said, how old are we talking? And he said, young. And I went going from 10, 12. He said, no, younger. I said, 8, 10, he went younger. I said, 6, 8. He says, oh, younger. And this is the horrifying point. I said, how young? And he said, babies. Excuse me? He says, babies. He said, I Babies. do it, and I'm part of a group where we watch and we do all of this. Part of a group. I don't know, I, I didn't know where to go. You know, I didn't know where to kill him or what. I was sort of paralyzed in thought. And he was talking about this as a case of, I'll have another cup of coffee. It was, it, he was nonchalant about it. He had no remorse. That, that seems evil. 
Well, this is, this is like psychopathic behavior. He has no sense of stealing, no sense of whatever. He just feels that he was entitled to do this. It is his right. And that is approved and blessed by his superiors. That's the more alarming situation in, in this, is that not only did he commit the crime, but he's part of a group. It's blessed and endorsed by his superiors. And that's just not typical to where he came from. I mean, as I've gone down that rabbit hole of this, this is the mindset in the Catholic Church. This is, this is a group think. This is just not an isolated incident. They have an industry in protecting pedophilia. It's an industry. It's a business. It's evil. I wasn't, I mean, I was, I'm surprised, but not surprised at the same time about this letter that you sent me a couple of letters. I'm going to be linking to those in the show notes as well yeah. today. But one of them I think is, is very, very telling. This is from the detective that was on this case. And in this letter, I just want to read a little bit to you. Uh, it says, quote, I, uh, in having just dealt with the Catholic Church in another criminal investigation, I fully expected that church administrators would be uncooperative and dismissive of the allegations. Much to my surprise, I was wrong. While meeting with Reverend John Gallagher and his staff, I was provided with timely evidence that was needed to arrest and ultimately convict this other priest, this foreign priest, uh, for the felony charge of showing obscene material to a minor. Father, you did the right thing. The sheriff's office is so impressed by what you did that helped to, you know, get the guy, get the bad guy, put him in jail, and like, you know, justice served. You you made it possible by your timely and effective help. But what happened to you as a result to you doing the right thing? I grew up in a terrorist country under martial law in Northern Ireland. It's easier talking to the gun of the provision IRA or any terroristic group easier than to deal and talk with the Catholic Church. They had vigilantes coming against me, protesting outside my parish. They had campaigns. They did a letter campaign. Um, they had, I was followed. I had been threatened. I had been told I could be taken out. Um, the list goes on. Um, you know, it affected my health. Um, I was refused the sacraments of the sick. I was told I wasn't eligible for them. <laughs> I was told never to set foot again in a Catholic church. Um, I have petitioned the Vatican on multiple occasions. And, you know, let your listeners know, I, even know, I was known to a lot of the cardinals personally in Rome. And here in the United States and in Ireland where I grew up, I knew these guys. You know, we were friends, I thought. And all of a sudden, it became the piranha. Wow. And, I mean, everything was ignored. I mean, Cardinal Sean O'Malley in Boston had stayed in my home. I'd been in his. On numerous occasions, he was the Bishop of Palm Beach. That letter, which you read, was sent to him. He has yet to answer it. Rome has never answered one of my petitions. They ignore everything. And one of the new weapons in the Catholic Church is a psychological evaluation. And most priests, and a lot of your council priests, and they appear in this, your show, and at other shows, are being weaponized by that. Many priests don't know this. Pope Paul VI in 1976 said bishops did not have the right to invade the internal forum by psychological evaluation. What is happening today is psychological evaluation is being used as weapon, as a weapon. Bishops yeah. are using this to groom their priests to be gay, to be predators. It's a new weapon of choice. That's evil. We jumped ahead a little bit, but I want to go back to I want to go back to your meeting with the bishop. So you you turn over evidence. They asked you not to do that. Somebody at the Chancery office called you and didn't want you to turn over evidence. They didn't want you to keep notes. They didn't want you to help the law enforcement. They wanted you to put the priest on a plane back to India, I guess. Tell me about that t real quick, and tell me about uh, how you met with the bishop. Um, well, once this event happened, I never met with the bishop again. I never saw him. Actually, on at April 30th, he told me he would never speak to me again in person. So I have not spoke to the bishop in 2015. Any other communication has been done through 
and his attorneys to my attorneys. There's been no communication. And that's what happens. They remove themselves from the situation and they put their henchmen into place. And they are the ones who come after you. It, you know, it's a very simple conversation. If it's not in paper, it never happens. I mean, it's, it's the exact opposite of what we're required to do with um, the Protecting God's Children program that that I had to take well, just recently. I'm required to take it yet again. And uh, well, and we have to go so through this training. Just, just put, and so put and they're there. telling you to do everything opposite of what they require you to train in. That seems rather crazy. This is a documented fact. Do you know Protecting God's Children and the life of it throughout the world? Do you know what that does? Mm. That is the manual for a predator. Any priest who has taken it has used that as a manual to get to pray. Wow. What is the status of the priest that you helped the sheriff's department, uh, you know, get arrested, convicted, etc.? Whatever happened to him? Did he get defrocked? Is, is he in jail someplace for his crimes? What's the story with the priest? He is working in a parish with the school back in India under the blessing of the cardinal who oversaw the sexual abuse um, symposium with survivors of the victims in 2018. He's back in full in ministry. He's in full ministry right now. He has his Correct. faculties. He still has the protection and the care of his superior or his bishop or what have you. And, um, and what is your status right now? <laughs> I'm in this new canonical status of priest of gone, forgotten, and uh, isolated, so to speak, we call him the spiritual purgatory. Um, I'm in a no man's land. I had no communication with the Catholic Church in over 10 years. Well, the book of Revelation calls it the spirit of the age, and we have the spirit of the age now where once if wrong is now because me, you're right. And, and I just know in my own story, I mean, there's a, that line, there's a story in Jeremiah where Jeremiah is asked to give the king the word from God. And the king says, don't tell anyone. Anytime I had a meeting with the bishop or their cohorts, the henchmen, it was the same thing. Don't tell anyone. It's a part of the secret. And that's the leverage. So you have young men right here now today being counseled, being groomed, being intimidated in private, and told, don't tell anyone. This is, the, this is the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah was counseled. He spoke out. And when young men speak out truth, they're being counseled. Because we have to take the recommended word of the spirit of the age. I live now with post-traumatic stress disorder because of the intimidation and the stress of our text. And you know, I, I have said this in copious amounts of times. I worked the second theater of the Northern Ireland Troubles, shootings and bombings and hostages and so forth. I grew up and lived in that and worked in that. That was nothing compared to the terroristic activities employed by the Vatican, executed through local bishops. Because that's what it is. It's terrorism. These bishops are terrorists. These priests that they employ are terrorists. And... These attorneys that represent them are terrorists. They're happening in plain sight. That's a terrorist. What parent? Mm. Lisa, go ahead and make disciples. What parent in their right mind today would want their kid, their son, to go into that organization to be destroyed? It's a scandal. A spiritual scandal. It's a physical scandal. It's abuse. It's a terrorism. And it's happening in the main street. Well, seriously, ask that question. If you had a son today, knowing what you know, would you want him to go into that world and that environment to take on that fight? The Word of God tells us this. We are to be salt and light. And what happens if salt loses its taste? That's what it calls to be, salt and light. And I know from those priests that I'm friendly with, and a lot of them have stopped talking to me, and they were told not to talk to, not to communicate. And there's young men out there today suffering. They're being counseled and they're suffering. And I'm sure the bishops out there are suffering as well because they don't condone this behavior. But be salt and be light. Yeah, be salt and be, be light. Me.
I mean, Catherine of Siena, one of my heroes. We need a Catherine of Siena to basically Amen. say, get back, no, get back to get out of Avignon and get back to where you're supposed to be. Get back to, get back to praying. Get back to your relationship with the Lord. Follow Jesus. What would Jesus do? Because that's the, the ultimate question. When you die, Jesus is going to say, what would you do with my name? And what, 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 what we have done? Will it get you into heaven? That's the goal. Amen. Did you like that video? It's okay. You can admit it. It's perfectly fine. Hey, we cover the big stories of our day from inside the church to outside the church to all points in between. And we do it from a Catholic perspective. It's called a Catholic take. It's a radio program Monday through Friday. We live stream it right here on this channel, by the way. So make sure to subscribe, like, and share. We would be very grateful to you. And don't forget, you're going to want to watch this video right here because you don't want to miss anything.